Charlie, hello. <laughs> it's like a United flight. It is. <laughs> It's not like a frontier flight. Oh my god. Our spirit flight. Alright. Alrighty. I've been hey. rolling this whole time. Oh. Oh, oh okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we should probably pay attention. Okay. <laughs> just... Alright, so do our standard hackathon intro. So we're gonna do it for each other or are you gonna uh, do it? We'll do it for each other and we're we gonna can, do it for each other. We can interrupt each other. Oh, yeah, we can do it. Good. All right, Alright, so All I'm right. gonna introduce <laughs> first off. Uh, I've known Jamie for yeah, but you know they're supposed to tell our names. We're supposed to, oh, no, you're supposed to I've known you. Jamie Powell. See next to me, right that's, here. That's my name. I've <laughs> known Jamie for what about six years now, mm -hmm. going on six, maybe seven. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've done countless number of training events, everything from some code attacks that mm -hmm. you and I partnered on, uh, to teaching classes, to running these hackathons that I'm now that Jamie kind of pulled me into, and it's interesting uh, working with Jamie, especially during the classes that we used to teach together. I realized Jamie is the person that is the absolute renaissance guy. He can do anything. If you need him to do something, he is there for you. If you want to bounce questions off of him, he will make time for you and bounce questions off him. Advice, yeah, he's there for advice. Uh, he's there for planning. He's there for whatever you need. He is there for you. Uh, he's like that all-purpose tool in your toolbox. For that reason, Jamie is Jake the dog from Adventure Time. Uh, Morphs and manipulates and does whatever he needs to get the job done, and he's the best friend you'll ever have and for life. So uh, that is Jamie Powell in a nutshell. Dude, how am I supposed to follow that up? <laughs> That's just... <laughs> so then this is Charlie Day in all his glory. He's been at uh, Attack Forever. <laughs> no, no, he's been here for a while. He has had varied experiences over his life. Um, but Charlie is the person, so he's the, the, the training director here at Tech. But what he's actually able to do is he's able to meet people where they are and then open opportunities to them. He's able to make these different connections that kind of scatter around. Uh, different fields from engineering to life sciences to the the engineering and aerospace and bring these people together who normally within their working lives would never come together and then open them up in a way that they can they can kind of breach the wall of professionalism professionalism and then become a person but then on top of that you're also able to bring in the students put them in the same room make them all comfortable and allow those those most needed conversations to occur so that everybody benefits. And so for me, I met uh, Charlie in our code attack. Right. Uh, so we're both volunteers um, uh, in the robotics one, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And Charlie and I were two of the volunteers that we don't mind going around and talking to the students, talking through problems to get them to be better. And so we became instant friends. <laughs> and so Charlie will have this thing, and he'll go, hey, Jamie, you want part of this on that? Sure. You know, hey Charlie, there's these hackathon things we're doing, and Charlie goes, oh, "Okay, let's give it a shot." He was a mentor. He became like one of the best mentors we have, like consistently winning and things like that. Teams love him. The students love him, and so we've been able to then transform them into this new way of really we're kind of changing the world a little bit, little by little. But having said that. There we go. Yours, that's, that, that is it. Oh, yeah, power. That, that's exactly what we do. But having said that, um, your spirit creature is, or character is definitely Tony Stark. But now, with Tony Stark, we're not talking about, because Tony Stark was the very character. He, he, he had a character arc, and he, his personality changed. You're that Tony Stark that's like, right after he got kidnapped, but before he saved the world, ha. where he, he has that humility and that way of looking back on his past experiences and viewing him through the lens of this is the way we can shape it in order to change the world. Plus, you're a snazzy jack. <laughs> so that on, on top, so definitely I'd say Tony Stark. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Um, I will say a lot of what we do, and this is one of the other co one of our other co-instructors actually made this comment. What you and I do is she, she considers to be cringeworthy teaching. <laughs> really? <laughs> She's well, oh, we, I know who so, that was. So we do the uh, one of the things. So there's a lot of aspects of programming, yes. right? Uh, and they kind of all fall into this little 
kind of a, a like Lego blocks, right? Each block has a certain job and each block does a certain thing. Well, we get to the section where we talk about loops and how loops work. And the first time I taught with Jamie, Jamie gets in front of the class and before even talking about loops, he has everybody stand up and sing hundreds of bottles of beer on the wall. <laughs> and he goes, keep on going, keep on going. <laughs> And I'm like standing there, and this is the first time I ever taught a class with Jamie, and I'm just standing there going, what, what? is he doing? You didn't seriously? Well, I joined him. <laughs> After I'm going serious, I was like, Jamie, seriously, you're going to have us sing this? He's like, oh yeah, everybody stand. It's like, okay. But that's the thing though, Jamie approaches problems uh, in a very unique way of introducing them and introducing how to solve them. Uh, which is why, you know, the, the hacks are so awesome, which is why s students freaking love you, and uh, which is why it's, such a, it's so much fun to teach classes with you. Honestly, uh, Jamie was talking about the back and forth that he and I do in, in front of the class. A lot of students think we're doing a bit. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, no, this is just how we are. Like, if you meet us in a classroom or, like, out eating or something, we're the same way. <laughs> it just, it is what it is. And we've always been that way. Yeah, That's we have always been thing. that way since day one. Since we met, I'm not I'm, sure why that just clicked. And he let did. me do 99 <laughs> bottles of beer on the wall. That's the funny part. And so then I turn around, and then I'm like, okay, so... 99 bottles of beer on the wall. So, all right, let's, let's, let's code it up. Right, so what we do we start programming it? We're, we, we pull it down. <laughs> what do we do then? We pass it around. <laughs> And then what do we do? We subtract one, so now how many are there? And so then they can see the process of how they do it. And they're like, oh, loops. Yeah. <laughs> one of my absolute favorite things our students do, that other instructors, it, it takes a very special person to, to, to uh, be able to accept this, that the students can come up with better solutions than you. Yeah. They can look at it from a frame of thought that will change your the, the entire meaning of the problem and give you such an elegant solution. And here all, wow, right. why didn't I think of that? And my God, you should come here and teach this class and let me sit over there for right. a little bit. There, there, there are a number of times where we've yeah. been like, would you, would you mind coming up and showing the class how you figured this out? This is so mm -hmm. cool. But I mean, how many teachers have you worked with like through that your actual academic career that you've seen that? And say, hey, come up here. Let me see what you did. Exactly. Yeah. And talk about it and tell us how'd you come up with this idea because I didn't come up with it. Yeah. Jamie didn't come up with it. Never seen it before. Mm -hmm. Could you explain the difference between a codathon and a hackathon? Ah. Well, um, so a codathon is somewhat of a new concept that Jamie and I kind of created. I'll, I'll give you the story where the codathon came from. Yeah. Uh, so we have this project in class, and actually uh, another one of our co-instructors mm -hmm. uh, introduced this project to me, and then I introduced this project to Jamie, and it's like, oh, wow, this is really awesome. It's a disease uh, pandemic model. Mm -hmm. It's the SIR model, S-I-R. Uh, essentially what it is is you have a patient zero who's sick. There's a probability of... Um, of how many people he interacts with and what the probability is that the people he interacts with get sick. And then there's a probability, the same probability that they interact with people who get sick and you see this disease propagate through. So it starts with one and then it gets, you know, almost everybody's sick and then everybody starts getting better again. So that was a problem that was introduced to us. So we have this thing. Um, we have these REU students, our research experience for undergrads. There are these interns that come to TAC uh, for the summer they have to do research, they have to do code, they have to do a presentation, uh, they have to put together a poster, and all these things that they have to do as part of their research experience. But there's a catch. They A lot of times they yeah. don't have the skills exactly. they need to do, or if they do, they don't feel comfortable with them. Right. So uh, Rosie tasked us mm -hmm. with coming up with a way of training these REUs. Right. Uh, well, the traditional way before. Yeah, the traditional way is just classroom just, training. You do classroom, you do hands-on tutorials. Yeah, it's like, hey, here's a yeah. half hour of Python, here's a half hour of, you know, OpenMP, here's a half hour of MPI, and cloud computing and whatever, and kind of going from classroom to classroom to classroom and learning these skills. Which, which is traditional. Which, which is traditional. Which you get works. excited when it's hands-on, but the issue is that a lot of times the expected outcome is just that. Yeah. If you follow steps one through 10, you'll get this. And it's like, yay, I did it. I have no idea what I why? just did. I have no <laughs> idea what I did or why yeah. it works, but hey, yay, I got something. Uh, so Jamie and I decided to look at it from a different aspect. We decided to look at it from, hey, this is our end goal. Our end goal is for them to solve some sort of a scientific comp computational model. Yeah. Right. So how do we get there? And we only have 
four days to get him there. Yeah. So we decided, hey, less. hey, let's <laughs> introduce this concept. Let's take what we learned from our hackathons, which mm -hmm. I guess we'll talk about here in just a bit, yep. and apply it to training. So let's say, hey, what if everybody codes the same exact model? To a point. To a point. Doesn't have to be the exact piece of code, but we will task them saying, hey, uh, figure out how two people are interacting, how mm -hmm. one person's sick, and you roll a die to see if the other person gets sick or not. All right, code that up. Okay, now let's say this person's sick, and now how would that person get transferred to this person? All right, let's code that up. Let's have a group of people, and we insert one person who's sick, and then they interact with person, and that interacts with another person, they inter and see how that works. Code that up. Mm -hmm. So we take these big project, and we break it into little chunks, and we have them we kind of code the, call those coding challenges. Mm -hmm. Hey, coding challenge one, do this. Coding challenge two, this. After the challenge is done, Jamie and I will get up there and we'll code it up ourselves so the students can see what's going on. So that's just the coding part. The, I guess the athon part yeah. comes where we now say, hey, this is a baseline model. This is not what's, this does not reflect what's happening in the real world. This is what's happening in a perfect world. So now, what would happen in a real world? Yeah. Well, people are vaccinated, people are masked, some people are not masked, some people are not vaccinated, some people decide to lock themselves down, some people don't. Mm -hmm. How would you code that into this model? And that's where the hackathon part starts into play. Coming from, from my side, so uh, the codeathon came in from a, a better alternative to hands-on tutorials. Yeah. The so, hackathon yeah. component came from two things, came from two people. Uh, it came from uh, Dr. Lynn Hayden, uh, which is my mentor at Elizabeth City State University, and then from Suzanne Pierce. She deserves a root. <laughs> yes, 100%. Dr. Hayden is awesome. She's I love such Dr. a great Hayden. person. She's, she's mama number two. Um, and Damn. then uh, Suzanne Pierce, yeah. that's my, my manager here, uh, she was in charge of this uh, group called uh, Ice Geo. And so we have this meetup every year where we'll get together, and uh, the very first one I went to was in Hawaii, and we're supposed to take these sensors, build sensors there, and deploy them. Sounds easy. Well, what actually happened while we were there is in Hawaii, beautiful place, uh, Mauna Lea started erupting, and then a hurricane decided to come. And so the organizers, Suzanne and the, the leads, they came back and they went, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Everybody, let's build sensors, design them. Uh, pitch them, then we'll build them and deploy them in the next two days. Wow. Super fast, super, so we, we're now, we don't care about the schedule anymore? Like, that that doesn't matter? <laughs> well, y'all just pick teams, that, and the, the, the disorganization of it brought the teams together. We created these devices and put them out. And it was an amazing learning experience, something I had never done in my life. Yeah. And so then Dr. Hayden introduced this, this concept of hackathons, and we were able to do the first one as underdogs at uh, Perk, uh, Perk 18. Yeah, Perk, I remember, I was, I was one of the judges yeah, at Perk 18. I'm backing up that, that like, the hackathon became a thing because of an erupting volcano and a hurricane. Yes, okay. in Hawaii. <laughs> okay. it, was, it was interesting. I feel like that's noteworthy. I mean, okay, so the, the, I mean, that's exactly where the hackathon should come from. You have yeah. this event that's going on, mm -hmm. and you have X amount of time, time. to yeah. be able to develop something to prep for that event. Yes. I mean, that's exactly what a hackathon is. It's a hackathon, you're, you're trying to create something, an application, documentation, or whatever, yeah. in a short amount of time. Um, usually, and a directed, and with, it's something with, you have buy-in. Directly applicable, right. applicable with buy-in. And that's the, that's the most important yes. part. The students have to have yes. a buy-in. They have to have, get connected to whatever it is they're building and designing. Right, so to answer your question directly, Wait, is there a question? Yeah, she did. She did. <laughs> so the hackathon's time scoped. Uh, you come in, uh, we you either pick or are given a problem, work on it for that amount of time, and then you your uh, report out your findings. The code of on variation of that is this weird conglomerate of of tutorials, right. hands-on tutorials, hands -on tutorials plus a little training, hackathon, plus and a little. hackathon, <laughs> wherein we teach you how to. We teach you up to a point as a group, even though you're coding along yeah. with us. And then, but there's a point at which you pick up that training because you now have those skills and you apply them to a problem. So you get the best of both worlds. 
So wrapping this up. Sure. Yes. Okay. How about uh, in two sentences or less? Oh you, God, really? You, you each. <laughs> We're directed two sentences. Two sentences or less. Okay. You each tell Lauren what you love about teaching these skills to this next generation of coders. Oh yeah, you get to go first. Oh, uh -huh. damn. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, students, every generation of students has a greater knowledge base than the generation before. That's one, okay? <laughs> That's one. <laughs> so our job is to collect that information from the students. Teaching is interactive. It's not me just saying, hey, I know everything and I'm going to teach you everything I know. That's not how it works. I learn everything that the, that the students have. I'm going to learn from them. I'm going to adjust my knowledge base. And now I'm going to teach that new knowledge base to this new group of students. That interaction is what I love. And Lauren is holding one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten sentences. English teacher. <laughs> that's that's why I had him go. But first. a lot of those are actually commas, <laughs> yeah. so they should be <laughs> and semicolons. And semicolons. <laughs> I mean, we're not punctuating like English. <laughs> we're punctuating like an English other language. <laughs> so I would like to use two sentences huh. as well. However, comma. <laughs> we would know. <laughs> no. No. Um, for me, it, it's very it, it's very simple. Uh, first. I know what it feels like to feel like you're an imposter, mm. that you shouldn't be somewhere. And teaching in this method, using the codathons and hackathon method, as well as the way that the, the methodologies that Charlie and I employ in the classroom, I hope give our students a feeling of security so that they can, it's okay to make mistakes, as well as it's okay to explore. And then the second part is, I love seeing the light bulbs. Yeah, the light bulbs. Those are great to see the little, the students all of a sudden realize, hey, I, I get this. Right. Or going from, I can't do this. I can't do That's why I love code attack. Yeah. I can't do this. I can't do this. I don't know what's going on to, oh, I got this. Let me show you what I figured out. It makes all the difference in the world. <laughs> Is there any prerequisite to coming to one of these classes? Uh, Call like for our, <laughs> our, so we have a, the courses we offer, yes. uh, they kind of build on one on top of the other. But Introduction to Scientific Programming, which is the first class in the series, is I would say you, you should probably take that one before jumping on to the other classes afterwards, which is science, Scientific and Technical Computing and then Parallel Programming. Those two can probably be taken in any order, but ISP is probably the first class you want to jump in on. And then we also teach software engineering and design, which is another class. It's great to have ISP as background to mm. jump into. The software yeah. engineering class is quite great. And I'll say for the for the hackathons, um, there there are two roles. There's the hacker themselves, and then there are mentors slash specialists. For the hackers, I would say some type of programming, some type of programming knowledge, and the rest you can kind of learn as you come in. For the mentors. All we need you to have is a problem. And everybody's got problems. <laughs> Come with a problem. And what I mean is something related to your job, or your career, your speciality. Bring it so in a, and then present it. We will teach you how to mentor. Yeah. That component is, I'm not saying it's easy, but we have some tips, skills, plus our hackathons. Plus our experiences of what we've seen and what we've done. Right. We're a family. We're here to help each other. Even though there's a competition component, we're here to help. <laughs> like I said, it's building the community yes. and then interacting with that community. Mm -hmm.